Sheriff Richard Mack reported this week that some 95% of America's sheriffs who are part of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association have resolved together not to enforce unlawful executive orders coming down from governors. Now, is this legal, what they're doing? Yes, it is legal, and it's, it's necessary, and it also follows long historic precedent, as we saw earlier, going back to the days of Rome in a previous video. There are also other historic instances of inferior magistrates, lesser magistrates, like sheriffs, disobeying and defying the superior magistrate like a king or an emperor. Of course, this happened in 1215 when lower magistrates, just regular armed citizens, forced a tyrant king to renew his allegiance to the laws of England. And so this is how King John, the tyrant King John, signed the Magna Carta and behaved himself for a while, a short while. But then when he began acting tyrannical again, the English took up arms against him in battle on battlefields and John died in a military campaign which preserved freedom in England. Another story in 1558, John Knox up in Scotland wrote lengthy articles teaching the crown and nobles that they were responsible to protect the innocent together. They should work together to do this. Any king or queen who made unjust laws or decrees must then be opposed by inferior officials. Now here's an even more dramatic story. Uh, it takes place in 1548 in Germany. The Protestant Reformation was in full bloom there. Many communities were becoming Protestant. And the emperor at the time, a Roman Catholic, was Charles V. And he claimed all authority over Germany and all the, all the people, all the Germans and all the churches. He issued a law forcing Protestants back under the traditional Rome, Roman Catholic Church and all Roman Catholic beliefs and practices and rule. And the Protestant authorities all across Germany were really terrified of this powerful emperor, and they meekly complied, all except the pastors in one village, the village of Magdeburg. They refused, and they wrote a defense of their position in, in defiance of Charles V. They published their confession, and it's now a very famous document, and we need to be learning about it and studying it again in the United States. They printed it in 1550. They called it the Confession and Defense of the Pastors and Other Ministers of the Church in Magdeburg. And the magistrates then of Magdeburg refused simply to submit to the emperor. That was really a very dangerous thing to do. They explained then why they could not betray their consciences and what they believed to be sound biblical doctrine and sound faithfulness to Jesus Christ and their understanding of the Bible. As they stood their ground, they were interposing themselves between the king's anger, the emperor's anger, and all the innocents in their village. And so how did Charles respond? Well, later that fall, he sent his armies, the mighty armies of Charles V, surrounded the city. They attacked the city. Well, first they they laid siege to the city for a long time, waiting in vain for the city to surrender, come to their senses and surrender and, and do what all the other cities did. But Magdeburg did not surrender. And so then the armies of Charles attacked. And over the course of, of a year, there was very heated battle. The armies of Charles killed 468 citizens of the city who were resisting. They were fighting back and they were not giving up. But in the process, they, the, city, the citizens of Magdeburg, killed roughly 4,000 of the king's troops. And then at that point, Charles agreed to withdraw them. And he signed favorable terms with the city, allowing the people to freely practice their Christian faith. And, and it was this courageous example of one city that inspired so much of the Western world to oppose the Emperor Charles, whose grand design all along was to re-Romanize all of Europe. But within nine months, the Emperor had to give that up and had to grant freedom because of the, of the attitude and, that was spreading all over, all over his empire, that Christians needed to and wanted to study the Bible on their own and practice their faith as they saw fit, and he had to let them do that. Now, during that long siege that lasted a year, the pastors who were holed up in, in Magdeburg 
wrote over 200 pamphlets. And this is one of the reasons that Charles lost the argument going forward after this. They wrote over 200 pamphlets explaining their doctrinal positions and teaching others across Europe why this doctrine of interposition was so important. The pamphlets were printed and reprinted by the thousands and they spread from France to Scotland. The Magdeburg Confession lays out in precise detail why tyrants cannot be allowed to abuse their authority and then abuse the people. It explains the duties of lesser magistrates to step in and oppose the tyrant. And today, it appears that mayors and county commissioners and policemen and sheriffs all over America are beginning to understand the vast importance of upholding this duty and this doctrine when they are being ordered around by power-hungry governors or health officials. So look into the resources below to learn more about the principles behind these historic duties. Thank you.